Good evening. It's Pat at Dancing Moon Travel here as usual with Kevin, our marketing director, all the way from Dublin, Ireland. And uh, we are delighted that you have chosen to spend some time with us this evening. Uh, we appreciate that. And and uh, if you happen to hear anything that you like, if you like us, if you share it, it is great. Uh, all of those things increase our visibility with Facebook. So like and share uh, away. Uh, don't have to settle for one like. As, as the uh, broadcast goes on, if you hear more that you things that you like, you can always hit it again. So all of that helps our visibility. I always feel so strange asking people to like us. It just feels so weird. But uh, anyway, it helps with, with Facebook. They've just got the, you know, how they are. So anyway, uh, we are excited today for our special guest. And, and, and one more thing, if you are in the market for a luxury cruise, uh, you will want to stay tuned toward the end here. Uh, yeah, Kevin? No, I was just pointing. Oh. <laughs> okay. Re Regent Seven Seas uh, is going to be joining us and they have an incredible offer a very, very uh, short-term promotion here for Good Friday. Uh, it's available now, but if you're in the market for a luxury cruise, you will want to stay tuned. So uh, if you're with us, stick with us. And is, now... Hey, Pat, is that yeah. Black Black Friday? Not Black good Friday. Friday. What, what did you, I say? Good Friday. You oh said my Good gosh. Friday. <laughs> For Black oh, Friday. Oh, y'all, <laughs> forgive me. Black Friday. Uh, it, it's different than Good Friday. But anyway, Regent Seven Seas is our guest today. We have uh, Nicole Castillo with us from Regent Seven Seas. She is the Director of Sales and Marketing for all of South Florida with Regent. Welcome, Nicole. We so appreciate you coming on board with us to uh, uh, tell us all about Regent Seven Seas. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Pat. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. Let's just start off, Nicole. I'd love to hear just a, a give, give us a little blurb about how did how long have you been in the travel business? How did you get in uh, to the cruise industry? How long have you been with Regent? What's a little of your background? Sure, absolutely. Well, as I like to say, cruising is all I know. <laughs> I've been in the industry. This is actually my 20th year. Uh, I started right after uh, high school, um, going part time with another major cruise line in, in their group department while I was going to college. And I just fell in love with with cruising. And it's one of those industries, as you know, Pat and Kevin, once you're in it, it's so hard to get to get out. So was with that particular um, cruise line for uh, 11 years. And then um, I grew up in South Florida. So when I started that industry, the cruise line, anyone who uh, is familiar with South Florida, you know that this is basically the heart of cruising. <laughs> this is the capital of cruising down here. But um, that company eventually moved me to Dallas. Stayed with them for a couple more years and an opportunity became available to move to the luxury cruising side um, with Regent. So I, I thought this is a great opportunity and been with Regent nine years later and here we are. <laughs> Wow. Wow. I, I'm so envious always of, of, of young people like you who get in into the travel business so early on in life. I wish I had even, I mean, it never occurred to me. Uh, I was, I was uh, way long in years and, and had spent many, many years in the legal offices uh, before I moved over to, to this business. So I'm very envious of those of you who started young, but anyway, I know our, our, uh, uh, listeners are here today because you want to know more about Regent to Seven Seas. And, and, and friends, just a quick heads up here that all luxury cruises are not created equal. They are very different animals. There can be huge differences from one cruise line to the next. Nicole, can, can you give us a bit of an overview about uh, what sets Regents apart from, from some of the other luxury providers? And by the way, folks, if you if you have questions, be sure to to just enter them in the comments box, and we'll we'll try to answer them as we go along. Okay, now go ahead, Nicole. Let us know what what some of the differences are. 
Sure. I think when you when you look at Region 7 Seas Cruises and, um, you know, you compare us to other luxury lines, um, I would say where we hang our hats, so to speak, is definitely in the um, all-inclusive nature, we call it every luxury included component. When you look at uh, the value of a Regent Seven Seas Cruise, that is truly where we set ourselves apart. Um, when you look at what's included, you know, everything from airfare for all of our itineraries. Um, if it happens to be an itinerary that involves an intercontinental flight, business class air is included in those fares. We're the only ones in the luxury cruise segment that that includes that. Shore excursions, you know, at any given port, our guests can take advantage of unlimited shore excursions um, that are gonna be valued anywhere between 100 to $200 per person. So we're so inclusive that you can literally step off the ship once you've completed your cruise with us and not have a bill at all. So that is definitely one of the key differentiators of our brand. Okay. And and that the, the level of inclusiveness is always one of the big considerations. When you're looking at value, you, you want to, to not only look at the bottom line price, you want to, to know what that price includes. And with Regent, that includes uh, so much more than what um, what you would might find in some of the other cruise lines. And we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit uh, down the line as well but but what how would how would people differentiate uh, themselves and and how would they recognize themselves as a regent cruiser what criteria would help them recognize regent as the best choice for them sure sure so another great question pat um you know i i like to say that if you have come back from a region a recent a cruise experience and you thought cruising's gotten too big, they just don't feel special anymore, or you feel like you're being nickeled and dimed. Those are truly um, characteristics if you're feeling that, that you perhaps are ready to um, experience a Regent Seven Seas Cruises. Because within the fabric of our brand, we can fulfill what you are um, feel like you're lacking from your previous cruise experience. Also, if you like something more relaxed um, in your luxury travel experience, um, we are definitely a great fit for you. When you look at the ambiance on board our ships, um, you know we we don't have any formal nights. Uh, we have open seating in our, our main dining room. There's no set dining time, so we're very unique in that very casual atmosphere in the luxury cruise segment as well it's kind of like the the private club kind of atmosphere uh the re rather than than uh uh you know there there are cruise lines out there and there's nothing wrong with they have their place too but but i mean where people are getting dressed for dinner every night and I, we're not talking about putting on a, a a jacket and an open collar we're talking about ball gowns and and tuxedos each night to go to dinner so that that's still out there and some people prefer that but some people are just over it <laughs> they're, they're they don't they don't want to go through that drill every day just to go to, to the dining room they they want to feel relaxed and comfortable and, and so region offers that experience Yes, and that was actually one of the feedbacks that we received from our past passengers a couple of years ago, that they've been there, done that with the ball gowns and the tuxedos and the suits and ties, and they just didn't want to have to travel with all of that. So um, one of the things that we do very well is listen to our past passengers. They're about 65% of our guests. Um, so we heard them loud and clear and basically eliminated the, the formal attire. Um, so the attire on board our ships is country club casual. So again, going back to that very relaxed environment. Um, I know that one of the things being that I've been in the industry for 20 years, uh, my husband, for example, loves cruising, but he hated when I would have to tell him to drag his tuxedo, you know, for those formal nights. So that was for him, a luxury in sailing with us that he didn't have to worry about doing that. So... So that that is that's lovely, and, and it's a packing problem. Let's let's face it. When you're when you're going to those, you you know, when you're doing one of those uh, dress up line cruises, I mean, you have to you you'll have three three pieces of luggage per person, just because you've got to have 
everything. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. You, you've got to have casual and you've got to have the ball gowns and then it, you've got to have something in between for the, for the other. And it's, it's just, it gets to be, the logistics get to be a little much uh, for a lot of us. Yeah. Now, and another thing that I wanted to touch on, Nicole, is the fact that Regent Seven Seas offers some amazing destinations and, and itineraries. Uh, do you have any personal favorites, anything that you would recommend to people sure. who are considering? You know, a lot of folks are always surprised when I say my favorite destination, you know, with us. And I, I would say by far Alaska. Alaska is one of my favorite places um, to visit just because I've, I always feel like I'm so in touch with nature when I am visiting Alaska. I, I, I always like to say also, I've never seen so many different colors or shades of blue um, in the various destinations that Alaska has to offer. So as it pertains to a Regent Seven Seas Cruise, we offer um, during the Alaska season, seven night itineraries, um, north and southbound from Vancouver to Seward. So basically cruising the Hubbard Glacier, going to um, ports like Sitka, Juneau, Skagway, Ketchikan, and then, um, you know, cruising the Inside Passage, just to give you an example. Um, and then what's really great about our Alaska cruises is that, let's say you want to see the inner part of Alaska, you can add a land package. So visit places with us, Denali, Talkeetna, Alieska. So you can tack that onto the cruise and either do a, a pre-land package or um, a post land package. And you can also do that too, Pat. We partner up with Rocky Mountaineer and you can do that, the Canadian Rockies with us as well. Wow. Or, um, on the Alaska, I'm, I'm sorry, on the Vancouver, uh, when the ship arrives or, 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 or leaves Vancouver. So that is, that is so fabulous. I agree with you. Alaska is just absolutely amazing. And you know, Nicole, I am so. I, I'm just heartbroken because I was scheduled to sail with you guys in July uh, and do Alaska, and I've never been able to sail on one of your ships. So I was so disappointed when that wasn't going. You know, I wasn't surprised. Obviously, and nothing was going, but but still, it was it was really uh, hard for me because I was so looking forward to that opportunity to to finally be on board with Regent and to one of my favorite destinations. Um, yeah. It but will happen. We'll get you it, back up. Yeah, we'll it, it, it's going to come back. Other opportunities will uh, come up. But you do Asia. Yes. Asia is another, you know, if you're looking for something a little bit more exotic, um, uh, unique, so to speak, or well-traveled itinerary, um, Japan right now is very popular. And we have some great round trip Tokyo itineraries. Um, we have it in the fall of next year. Um, so fall foliage in Japan is lovely, but e probably even more popular is um, Japan during in the spring during cherry blossom season. Oh, yeah. So we offer a round trip um, Tokyo itineraries and that's very popular for us. Probably one of our actually top five popular itineraries is the round trip Tokyo itineraries for us. Wow. And and you guys, of course, you do the med, you do, uh, you know, the, the Greek islands and all of that. And uh, you, you, uh, I know you, you guys do hit the Caribbean still uh, f from time to time you pass through there. So, yes. so lots, lots of great options for, for itineraries and, and uh, what about port times there? Do 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 you guys tend to stay in port? So we are pretty um, port intensive and we have been where you're visiting a different port almost every day. Um, but we in our new launch that we just released last month um, for itineraries, April 22 to into 2023, um, we have a lot more overnights. So overnights in, in places like St. Petersburg, not just one overnight, but two or three overnights in St. Petersburg for our Baltic cruises, or um, perhaps uh, you know you're doing a, you want to overnight in Bordeaux. We have a great itinerary where we do that. So we are offering a lot more overnights in our specifically, especially in our new and, um, collection. And, and for people who may not have you know taken cruises because you don't like the fact that you have such short times in ports, you want to be a little more. Uh, 
uh, immersed in your destinations, those overnights are extremely popular. And, yeah. and uh, I, I think that's great that you guys are going to be offering more and more of those as, as things move forward. Uh, that, that cultural immersion really can happen then. Yeah. Destination immersion is definitely definitely a trend that we have been seeing in the last couple of years. So it's very important for us to continue to add more of that overnight experience. And I think that I think that's definitely a trend in the industry. And you guys are really going to, as usual, be leading the way on that. I love that. Uh, now, value. This is this is we touched on this earlier, but but. Can you kind of explain to people, we, I couldn't get that, that wonderful comparison chart. Uh, if anybody would like us to send that out, just let, let, you know, reach out, make a comment, and I can send you a copy of that. Just wouldn't display on our screen. We tried and tried. But can you explain to us, how is it that somebody who say, say they book on a premium cruise line, they like to book a suite co accommodations on a premium cruise line and, and uh you, you know, like to do things in an upscale way, but how is it that that they could actually step up to to Regent and have that be a better value for them? Sure. So, you know, to for, to start off with, we um, are all suite accommodations. So even our minimum accommodation is going to be a, a suite. So you're going to hear me refer oftentimes as we I don't say cabin, I say suite because that's what we have to offer. But um, so if you're booking a mini suite accommodation with one of the premium lines um, and you are booking one of our, I don't like to call it minimum accommodations because there's nothing minimum about it. But if you're booking one of those leading, now you're talking apples to apples. And in some cases, most cases, you're talking uh, about even a larger suite at our minimum accommodations. 90% of our fleet is going to be no less than 300 square feet. Um so that's to start off with. And then when you look at the all-inclusive nature of our product, with that air component being built in, the shore excursions, the gratuities, the drinks, specialty dining. I know we all love to take part in that wonderful specialty dining experience that the other brands, you know, uh, offer and they do a wonderful job, but I know you're paying a, a pretty penny to experience that. With us, we offer that same experience and there's no additional cost. Uh, you know, everything from internet, uh, where folks a couple of years ago wanted to go in their travels to disconnect. Now they want to remain connected. So we we're evolving even in our inclusions. Um, one of the other inclusions that we started um, adding now when we resume cruising is free valet laundry service. So again, all of the expenses that you're typically doing on that premium cruise, because, you know, you're going to want to take part in the shore excursions, the gratuities, you're going to, you know, give that to the crew members. Um, we're, we're including that. So you almost may be paying for this type of experience when all is said and done um, on that premium cruise line, where with us, you're paying for it up front. And just to add to that, um, we're no more than 750 guests. So when you talk about the personalized experience you're going to get on board a Regent Cruise, I know we haven't talked about that, but because of the nature of having less guests, more crew, that's that's one of our models as well, our crew members really have the ability to get to know our guests, connect with them, and deliver upon what's important to them. So. Wow. So it, it really does. I mean, I, I know that people you, you're listening here, I know that you've had that experience. You you pay uh, $3,000 a person for your sweet accommodations on, on a, a lovely cruise line. And then, then by the time you book your excursions, say you have five excursions up in Alaska, they're not cheap. That's going to be probably $700 a person you add on for excursions. And then you have your bar bill for another four or $500. Uh, all of that adds up. And then your airfare on top of that. So Regent really can. You can step step up to that five, well, six-star luxury <laughs> with Regent. Uh, and and really come out money ahead many times. So, or very little more that you would pay for the, to, to have that really, really unforgettable experience. So just something to think about as you you people who who love to think about value. Uh, you can't do better than Regent. 
And so, I also want to talk just really quickly, just mention, um, you know, when you look at, yes, you may be paying maybe a little bit more. Sometimes you may be in par to what you're spending, but um, also it's about the experience you're go going to have with us. You know, you're, you don't have to worry about signing a bill every single time you, you know, purchase a drink or, you know, you're traveling with friends. You know, one of the jokes among our guests is I'll take the next round. Everyone's happy to take the next round because there's no <laughs> charge for it. So it's also about the experience of having those inclusions, which is nice. Right. It, it really is no worry. You don't have to kind of be keeping tab on, on your expenses or anything. So so it, it really is. I mean, you know, it, it really takes away some of the stress and concerns that you have. You don't have to think about, about your bar bill. It's, it's not going to exist. So um, let me ask you something else about, about your fleet. I think you have five vessels now. And, and uh, now, will the passenger experience, I, I know from sometimes from one ship to another, uh, you, you know, I think of a certain very well-known uh, cruise line that also starts with an R. They have vessels that accommodate a th uh, about fifteen hundred people, and they've got some that that accommodate six thousand people. So your experience could be very different from one ship to the next. Uh, what about with region? Do you, is the experience the same? Are your vessels very different? I would say it's a very similar experience. Um, pretty consistent throughout all five of our vessels. As a matter of fact, when we introduced our newest ship back, um, well, since then we've had a new one that we've released, but back going back to 2016, when we introduced the Seven Seas Explorer, um, at that time, we the tagline of that ship was the most luxurious ship to ever be built. And we, before that ship even set sail, we actually invested over $120 million on our existing fleet in order to create that consistency with the new ship launch and our our other ships because we didn't want somebody to go on board the Explorer for the first time and absolutely fall in love with it, book on board on, and then go on the Voyager and think and be disappointed. So the ambiance is very, very similar among the, the five ships. The name of the specialty restaurants are the same. The name of the main restaurant are the same, um, very similar categories and whatnot. So yes, I, I would say absolutely uh, the similar experience. So people don't have to be very cautious cautious about booking from one ship to the next because their experience is going to be comparable uh, where, wherever they book with Regent. That, that's, I always think that's a great plus. You don't have to shop the ship. You know, you, with the cruise line, your experience is going to be consistent throughout. That, that's great. Uh, let me ask you, Nicole, what surprises people? What, what, you know, people who sail on, you, on Regent for the first time, what surprises people? Yeah, I think by far it's the how friendly everyone is from the captain to the crew members to even their their um, the guests that they're traveling with. I think everyone's always blown away by that when they experience our product because sometimes there's some you know misperceptions out there of luxury maybe being a little stuffy maybe being you know a little pretentious and we are nothing like that so i think that is definitely one of the things that surprise guests that are experiencing us for the first time i mean even from we do something that we call our block party the first night or second night out and basically the captain will go on the loudspeaker and, and have everyone exit their suites and ask them to bring a, a bought a glass of champagne or a glass of wine and you have all of our entire crew member including our captain um you know going on every deck saying hi to everyone and the idea is to meet your neighbors so we really try to create an atmosphere where it's your home away from home so fun factor you know and, and the the unexpected i would not expect that to to uh uh have the, the the captain come through to greet us in our in our hallways that's so cool i like that 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 is fun so let we've got an elephant in the room we might as well address it <laughs> you know we, we've got covid just wreaking havoc in the industry and and uh uh how is regent preparing to sail and 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 how are you going to address those passenger concerns as we begin to move forward finally in the cruise industry Yes, we're definitely turning a, a page here uh, or a chapter in this very long book. <laughs> but um, 
You know, very good question. And I, I got to say, my organization has been working for months now um, in trying to really uh, put together rigorous health and safety protocols that are going to make our ships as safe as possible for our guests, our crew members, and the communities that they're visiting. So we collaborated actually with the Royal Caribbean um, family uh, back in July, and we created a healthy sail panel. Um, and the purpose of that, so various experts in infectious disease and maritime operations all collaborated in order to um, put together basically recommendations of what cruising um, should look like once because of the COVID-19 situation, once they resume uh, cruising. So um, some great news in the industry. We no longer have a no sale order. We have a conditional sale order. Um, so we are definitely working in trying to meet that conditional sale order. And we, as our CEO, Frank Del Rio has said many times, we're not going to rush it. We, we're going to do it right. And as much as time as it takes, he's going to not have our ship sail until he feels it's safe enough for his fa own family to sail. Um, so I do think we're very close to cruising here. I think we're going to see um, some differences as far as, I mean, naturally, of, of what that experience is going to be like. Um, but I think one beautiful thing about the humans is the ability to adapt, right? Um, so I'm very excited. I think we're all anxious to get back in the water, and I know it's going to be done in a very safe way, and it will be done soon. Yeah, I, I, I think I share your, your optimism. I think it's not going to be too far. Definitely first quarter, we're going to see some ships sailing. I personally cannot wait. Uh, you guys have a promotion, Nicole, out there for, for Black Friday. Can you share that with us? I know they've got people got a short window of time here. So we want to let them know because this is a good offer. Yes, hey, yes. Uh, we have. Can I we interrupt? Have, yeah, go ahead. Maybe uh, we've got this cool video. Oh, I forgot that the video. That might entice, even entice people more to look at this Black Friday offer. Can I play that now? Play. Oh, yeah, please. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, plug that video in for us, and, and then we'll hear about the offer. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, if you could envision yourself in, in that experience, now you want to listen to this offer from Nicole because this you, you this could make it happen for you. So Nicole, tell us about Black Friday. 
Yes, so we have a wonderful um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday offer um, currently in place, and it's good through November 30th. Um, but basically, it's a tier, uh, two-tier offer, and it's on numerous sailings for 2021 Europe itineraries. And what we are offering guests is a 20% savings, which is a significant savings for our product. And then as a bonus, we are also giving a $500 shipboard credit um, with this offer. So that's good again. So through November 30th on select um, Europe itineraries for 2021. So for example, um, just to give you an idea of an itinerary that's on there that I thought I was blown away. Um, we have our London to Reykjavik itinerary. Iceland's another very popular destination. So that's on there um, for next summer part of this offer. Now, as far as the shipboard credit component, I get a lot of folks asking me, you know, everything's included. What am I gonna use that shipboard credit for? Well, there's a lot of things you can use it in terms of the, the spa. Um, you can use it towards the onboard shops. You can use a private uh, towards a private car and driver at a particular port. So um, definitely ways for you to use that shipboard credit, um, even though we are an all-inclusive nature product. You, you may have to be a little more creative, but who couldn't use a massage right now? Right. Exactly. I mean, please tell me. I know, uh, you, you know, I'm put me at the top of the line for that experience too. So, uh, you know, and, and uh, throw in a facial maybe too. <laughs> exactly. You have enough to throw in a, a massage and a facial. There you that's, go. That's right. For sure. So just to sweeten that offer, Nicole, uh, to further thank anybody who books your Regent seven seas cruise under this special offer by November 30th, we're going to give a special offer ourselves. Uh, we're going to give you a, a Dancing Moon Travel tote bag, uh, branded tote bag. It will be a collector's items, folks. Uh, we're going to pack that full of cruise essentials, including a pair of five-star rated binoculars, just so you won't miss anything. This is a value of over $150. So, folks, uh, Book your Regent Seven Seas offer by by November thirtieth. Uh, get in, go to Europe next summer. Uh, you know you're ready to go, and uh, we can help you make that happen. Nicole, thank you again. Thank you so much, Pat. Thank you so much, Kevin. And it's truly an honor to join the both of you today. Yeah, Kevin, well, thank you for I've for enjoyed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm ready it, to go. <laughs> yeah, I, no. I think that, that we, that we could all. Uh, I can't wait to sail again. So, uh, I, I think do, that we do have you a sail lot out of, of Ireland. I'm sorry. Do you sail out of Ireland? We don't sail out of Ireland, no, but London. we do. We do right. Okay. So, so he could run, he could run down, down to London and, ca and, and catch a ship there. So, well, thanks again, Nicole. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Don't forget, uh, uh, every Tuesday evening, 730, you will catch us here. And uh, uh, we will uh, see you again next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody.